And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight-up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. And today we're talking about Generation Zero. This was a game a lot of people reached out to me to take a peek at, and I was glad to because early on I was really interested in it. That You know, the early trailers and the gameplay developer videos look pretty cool for a co-op PC-ish game experience. Plus, it's a side project for Avalanche, the awesome developers behind stuff like Just Cause, hello, and the criminally underrated Mad Max game. Now, it looks like the developers wanted to make their own spin on an open world co-op loot FPS, and they watched Stranger Things, and boom, uh, what we get here is this Generation Zero, a game I really want to like, and, and it seems great on paper, somewhat, but honestly, I I'm just not feeling it. It feels extremely early access, it's stretched really thin, even though it technically isn't early access. Now credit where it's due, the developers have been receptive and have been taking ideas and feedback, they've even fixed some glitches so far, but ultimately I, I just find the core of the game unfun. And that to me is a bigger sin than just a, a gameplay mechanic I don't like or a story I don't jive with or anything else. A game that's boring to play is just boring to play. It's a shame because the setup is so exciting. The atmosphere and world building at times can be pretty kick ass. Basically, it's a version of history where Sweden got through World War II and decided to spend money bolstering their defenses and technology and robotics and training every citizen in case of an emergency. Then you're a teenager in 1989 uh, with a group of friends returning home from a trip and basically, everyone is gone. It feels like everyone disappeared in a flash, like car doors are left wide open, coffee cups are still full, newspapers flutter around. So it's really up to you to kind of unfurl the mystery slowly of what's going on, considering there are killer robots everywhere. So from there, you set out on the lonely landscape, sneaking around and fighting robots, getting loot, and leveling up your character. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna say it's much much better with friends. You can match make with randoms and it's simple and it works, but having conversation and having fun and planning and coordinating your sneaking and attacks makes it a little better. You know, it makes it a little bit more fun. You can solo this game. As someone who plays mostly solo, I do appreciate that, but it's just dreadfully dull. Think about how lonely you might feel in something like the early days of Fallout 76. Like, no NPCs, nothing really going on, you're just trudging from area to area. And to Fallout's credit, there's way more going on in the environment there than there is in this one. But what I'm saying is basically you need friends to fill the silence and just generally make things a bit more dynamic. I'll get to that in a bit. I've thrown around the words dull and, and boring so far, but I haven't really touched on completely why it feels that way. W one thing is, like I mentioned, the empty environments. The map is absolutely huge. It's so big. It's like ridiculously massive. I'd almost go on to say it's too massive for a game type like this but that's a little bit more debatable. What really made me lose interest was the quest design, or really lack thereof. Uh, most of the game boils down to creeping from place to place through giant fields, across mountains, farms, small towns, to get to a marker. You know, you find a map, a scrap of note, something written on a wall, or an answering machine message, giving you a clue as to where to head next to look for more survivors, which, spoilers, the game kind of strings you along and you never really find them. It strings you along with threadbare quests asking you to loot houses for items and stuff, all the houses really feel like the same cookie cutter design. I saw one house early in and then like five hours later or so, drastically deeper into the map, I was seeing the same exact styles with few variations and, and they just felt pointless to go in unless it was a mission or if I was really in dire need of like a med pack or something. And the loot spawning is weird too, to say the least. You clear out areas or houses to check off boxes, but occasionally I ran into issues where it seems like the loot just didn't spawn, it just wasn't there. Now the loot itself is fine though. The inventory system works. There's lots of little gadgets and doohickeys. Getting cosmetic items for your customized created character is fairly consistent and falls in a nice weird late 80s, early 90s vibe that I really appreciate. Weapons come in various different states and conditions and are Swedish named a lot of the time and have various parts that you can equip like silencers and scopes and optics. Combat itself, I actually kind of like, not to contradict myself, but you know, it, it doesn't actually control that well. Even with tweaking the sensitivity on PC, ADS and normal aim never felt quite right and it can all feel kind of slow and chunky or way too much. You can level up how fast you can aim and reload and eventually more, but it only goes so far because it just feels weird. But what I do like, like I said, the combat I do enjoy is the feel, the sound, and, and the feedback the weapons give off. It's really satisfying to like blow off a mechanical part of a robot. There, there's usually a loud bang, some cool sparks and flame effects, and it's really fun to dissect a robot with a well-placed sniper shot. 
Problem is, the other stuff, the stealth itself, is weird. It feels weird. I get that they're all robots out there and they have perfect sound and vision and all this technology, but the rules just don't really feel very strong. Hours and hours in, it seems like everything is inconsistent. It just feels like the stealth is kind of broken at times. Sometimes foliage works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's harder for them to hear you in the rain, like it's designed, and sometimes it doesn't. Regardless, one thing I don't like about the giant environments with this is that because the robots are so sensitive and they can see so far, you have to go really long stretches on land, walking completely crouched, and you move really slow. I don't mind the challenge of sneaking and stuff, but when you move so slow, it just makes it all really tedious. You know, combined with those unsatisfying missions, it all just feels kind of like a slog. The further north you get, the cooler the robots become. They get really massive too, which helps, but it takes a while. And the game shows a lot of its gameplay cards before that, and I found myself caring less and less about seeing what else the game had the more I went on. Which really, I think a game should do the opposite. But what I do like is the stealth through, through co-op. That helps it. Coordinating, sneaking past enemies where one person throws a radio to distract them, or one person uses a flare to disrupt their trackers while someone else provides cover fire. When the game is really working like this and you're all kicking ass, it can be kind of cool. It can. Uh, the robots are interesting and they can actually be pretty terrifying at times too. Plus, leveling up your character, you can sort of specialize yourself as like a scouter, someone who runs fast, a shooter in some ways, so it makes the leveling up feel a little bit more decent, and like a little bit with classifications that you could eventually get. Frankly, there's a lot of skill tree to grind through and it can be somewhat satisfying. But again, if you're solo, you might feel like a lot of it doesn't matter much. I just wish the game leaned into the team stuff and, and fun encounters more. I mean, you can say that the threadbare quests give you room to make your own adventures with friends online, but the environments being so bland, it didn't really matter much to me anyway. But I'll end on a high note. The music is really cool, 80s inspired stuff, and the environment at times can look pretty incredible. Foliage and trees look great, and mysterious. The graphics and atmosphere combine to really walk a good line between dreary and lonely and just stark European beauty. Really, with this game, the foundations are there for something better. If you notice, for every bad thing, I had like one okay to good thing. You know, the cool robots, the shooting of them, the playing with friends, it's there. It just needs more content and more interesting stuff besides the robots themselves, because otherwise there's nothing. That's really it. It doesn't really feel worth the ride at all, especially considering there are so many other games out there demanding your time right now. I don't know if Generation Zero is really worth it. I'll keep my eye on it, like how it's updated, if it changes, because I really, really wanted to love this one. But of course, that's a before you buy. You know how this is. I gave you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinions, so now I want to hear yours down in the comments. Like with every game I kind of dunk on, there will be a defense force, but like I want to hear from you guys. If you really enjoy this game, I'm happy for you, and I want to know why exactly, like what clicked for you that didn't click for me. Whoever you are, whether you're playing it, maybe you checked out the beta, let's talk down in those comments below. But if you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something, clicking the like button helps us out a ton. We would really appreciate that. And if you're new, it's worth considering subscribing because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.